didn't just break new ground by shining a light on black American education and never backing away from serious topics. It also featured a beloved, talented, amazing cast of characters that made it one of the funniest shows on television. Take a look. Delisa, are we planning to audition for Miss Knight? We might. Oh, I think you should. Your voice is perfectly suited to sing back up. You are not Dwayne Wayne. You must be Arsenio Hall. <laughs> Go ahead and smile. Let me see if your gums are three feet high. This is my black book. And I'm burning it up, because you give me so many problems, I don't want to call nobody else in here. Walter, you do not have to do that. <laughs> Why didn't you say that earlier? I don't like your own. I never have. You're a greasy worm with the charm of a cockroach. <laughs> I've been waiting all summer for that hey, rat! Hey, 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 Please welcome Jasmine Guy, Kadeem Hardison, Debbie Allen, Lee Summer, Daryl Bell, and Dawn Lewis. Yeah! Y'all just walked out uh, to the theme song from A Different World, sung by Aretha Franklin. Right. Dawn. Yes, ma'am. Did you write that song? <laughs> I wrote that song. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I did. I did. The musical director of The Cosby Show knew me as a singer-songwriter. So he called right. me out of the blue. He had one of my demo tapes and said, would you be willing to work with me on this theme song I need it Friday. This was Wednesday. Right. Oh. The same hour that oh he God. called me, the casting directors, I was doing a Broadway tour for them, said, are you still interested in auditioning? Can you come in tomorrow, Thursday, and audition? Within less than 10 days, I had written the theme song and booked the co-star spot on the series, and they had no idea they'd hired the same person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 I love that. We got a now, um, Jasmine, you played Whitley Gilbert. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, a Southern belle with a good, uh, a good heart okay. and a gift for one-liners. Yeah. Um, maybe some of the things you shouldn't have said, but what was that like as an actor to have a role like that? Well, uh, a couple of things that I said. Um, once to Denise Huxtable, played by Lisa Bonet, mm -hmm. I was saying I had gone shopping and I parked in the nearest spot and it was the handicap. And I said, well, why should I be punished? Because I can walk. <laughs> <laughs> I said a lot of politically incorrect things, but I knew that the rest of the characters would fix it. Yeah. And it wasn't going to let that just go out there on its own. Right. You know, right. Divesting now, from apartheid. You know, there were a lot of right. things that right. Whitley was... Uh, yeah, she wasn't, she had to learn, she had to grow up. <laughs> Which was the perfect mix, though. It's not who you expect it from, the, the Southern Belle. But do you have a favorite Whitleyism? Is that what they're called? I guess. Now they are. <laughs> um, well, a lot of people, when they imitate me, will say Dwayne. Okay, <laughs> so okay. It must be, you know, Dwayne! <laughs> I find highly annoying, but <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. He likes it. It worked for him. <laughs> well, speaking of Dwayne, Kadeem, you played Dwayne Wayne. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, a goofy, nerdy engineering student, yes. which I loved. Um, but as the kids would say today, he had Riz, <laughs> right? He had a little Riz oh, no. and his trademark glasses. Yes. Um, he wasn't the typical male lead character, which was so special then. Um, is, is that what drew you to him? And, and when did you first realize that to fans, Dwayne Wayne was a really big deal? Mm. Wow, I am still getting it retroactively. This wow. is really becoming clearer and clearer when I look at faces and I yeah. go to schools and I see how the kids react and how their parents react. I, I had no idea. No, the, none of those things were the reasons that I was attracted. I, was, I wanted a job. Yeah. <laughs> I was an actor, it was a job. I went in, I gave my best uh, shot at it, mm. got it, 
and um, and the fact that it's lasted this long and it's yeah. still relevant is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. yeah. Now, the show as a whole, A Different World, was known for its balance of jokes, romance, uh, some of the most topical storylines. You also had amazing guest stars over the years. In fact, oh, one yeah. of them might be Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. 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 We've got a clip. So tomorrow's assignment is to be speakers at your own funerals. Uh, uh, you mean deliver our own eulogies? So bright, so fast, so black. <laughs> yes. I find that try more babe. <laughs> well, it's a way to examine your goals in English. <laughs> It is also an opportunity for each and every one of us to ponder our place in American history. And I can see yours is going to be too long. I have to ask you guys, what do you remember, especially Debbie, what do you remember about working on that together? Mm. I... I remember especially the degree of difficulty of doing a show about AIDS. Mm -hmm. And Whoopi Goldberg was our secret weapon. Yeah. She was someone that I knew we were friends. Mm -hmm. We all knew she was going to win that Oscar that mm -hmm. year. Yeah. 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 And when we were the first network television show to address AIDS, yeah. mm -hmm. after Magic Johnson made his announcement, mm -hmm. I had to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Susan Fells and I, we put our heads together, and I said, we got to get a big gun to make this happen. And Whoopi, I called her, and she said, yeah, <laughs> I'll do it. She was down. Yeah. And it made it possible to save millions of lives that mm -hmm. you said, yes, Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> and that's the truth, because the advertisers were pulling out. Yeah. yeah. They I pulled remember up. that. You I remember, remember that? that? Yeah, I remember wow. that. Wow. We had never had to show a script to an advertiser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it was our highest rated episode. Mm -hmm. that wow. 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 Yeah. 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 But but I, I want to point out something, because the, the thing that no one has said yet that I want to make sure that I, I point out is that, yeah, folks needed a job, but this was also a unique opportunity yes. that did not present itself. And you know that because you only saw one show mm -hmm. right. full of characters who were brown mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. about a school, a college, yeah. someplace you didn't see us on television. Right. It was just a reminder. Yeah. So that, I mean, yeah. you know. And anytime Debbie asked me to do something, I just said yes. <laughs> yeah. I said yes. She would have, because we worked together on one of the Oscars. <laughs> and I felt really terrible because I made a joke. Because the dance was like something of the wind. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I called it Colors of My Wind. <laughs> <laughs> and I got into so much trouble. People were very annoyed because people didn't like fart jokes in those <laughs> But I, feel, I felt like every time Debbie called me, I should say yes because I really stepped all over. <laughs> yeah, no, it was the no, best. The was best fine. was really when, remember when you needed that brown dress and I gave you my? Yes. We were doing the Oscars, and you know, it was always about what you were going to wear. Mm -hmm. She was one of the greatest hosts ever. Mm. Come on. Yeah, she was one of the greatest hosts ever. And she was like, Get me this dress ain't working. I need something. I, I need something. It's not working. I said, Well, I got this brown velvet. Yes, brown velvet. Where is it? And I gave her my yes. fabric, wow. and she got a dress. And I stretched it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it looked good. I'm sure it looked good. Yeah. Uh, Cree, let me ask you this. Yeah. You played Freddie Brooks oh, on wow. the show. Yeah. You and your castmates here, um, and including Charnel Brown and, and Glenn, the great uh, Glenn, great. Uh, great. Glenn, 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 are doing something incredible. You're on a different world HBCU college tour. Yes. And where you travel around to different HBCUs to speak to the students, yes. um, having graduated from the most famous television version Maybe. of an HBCU, yes. Hillman College, everyone. Um, how connected. <laughs> How connected do you feel to, to all of this? Um, and what's it been like to hear from students on these campuses? Because I'm sure many of them 
have seen a different world. Well, I, what is fascinating is I remember we were at Spelman and the audience mm -hmm. was asked, how many of you were born when different worlds <laughs> came on the air? <laughs> and, no, and no one was born, oh, right? Yeah. They, they, it, this was a show that their parents watched, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was incredible. It was like the Beatles came to town. Wow. The we got. Yeah. And it was overwhelming and humbling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, you know, really I attribute it to Debbie Allen, you know, yep. because... Yep. Black people are black people are not a monolith, and what right. she did was she gave everyone an opportunity at home to see themselves. Yeah, that's right. They saw themselves in Jaleesa, in Ron, in Freddie, in in Whitley, in Dwayne, yeah. in Colonel Taylor, in Lou Gaines, mm -hmm. and she kept it multi generational. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this show has inspired so many generations to go to HBCUs. Right. And yeah. so. I just feel like this tour is a testament to the legacy, yeah. and it is more now more important than ever mm. with the state of politics yeah. that we uh, that we highlight yeah. HBC. Yeah. Yes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you played Ron Johnson, <laughs> <laughs> and I believe you were just invited to the White House. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> where you met the press secretary, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, Howard Vice President Kamala Harris. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> Just another day. <laughs> no, no, nothing really. It, it was a spectacularly was. humbling and amazing experience. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, to sit down with Madam Vice President, uh, mm -hmm. Harris and to have time with her one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not only the first African-American vice president, a Howard alum, H-U, you know. H-U, you know. <laughs> and AKA first fam, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, to, to get her perspective on what her day is like, mm -hmm. what her job is like, mm -hmm. what her responsibilities are like, and what the fight is like, and the fact that she there was a, a state dinner for Japan. Right. And she still made time for us. Wow. Mm. And she said it, it, it was because of the work that we were doing to, again, inspire another generation yeah, to right. go to HBCUs and to get an education. You know, for all of us, we talk about the fact that while we were on air in prime time, we had 20 million people watching, okay? And that's a lot. Yeah. We didn't have social media. That's right. Mm -hmm. So now we experience a response to our show that's different. Yes. Mm. And what makes it special for us now is because we're older, mm -hmm. we really can appreciate the love that's come back. And mm -hmm. for right. any show that celebrates the fan experience for everyone who enjoyed it, it's different when someone says, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, yeah. Yeah. I'm a yeah. lawyer, yeah. because right. I watched a different world. Yeah. Yeah.